Seattle's this big city with lots of charm, and with lots of charm comes lots of neighborhoods. If you live near Capitol Hill, or actually if you're alive near Capitol Hill, you should go to Crumble and Flake, which is a little pastry shop. It's so darling. Neil Robertson is the owner and head baker of Crumble and Flake. He opened it in 2012. He likes to experiment. He likes to push the limit. The more interesting we are, the more people love it, and the more they want to try new things. Uh, the pistachio croissant. Neil's customers go crazy when the pistachio croissant is on the menu, and for good reason. He starts by mixing pistachios, cornstarch, and powdered sugar in a food processor. He lets this go for 10 minutes, so by the time he gets back to it, it's this light and airy powder. To a standing mixer, he adds that pistachio powder to butter. We love the butter. He adds eggs and then some aged rum. We want aged rum. <laughs> Mommy knows her rum. To that, he adds pastry cream, which is a mixture of milk, cornstarch, eggs, sugar, and butter. And then, the croissants. And these are already baked handmade croissants. They're delicious as is. They're fine. <laughs> Neil decides to make them better. He slices them down the side and then opens them up, and then he brushes an orange blossom-flavored simple syrup on top, which I am a big fan of. And then he pipes that pistachio cream into each of them. That croissant is brimming. There's so much pistachio cream inside. But he's not done. He takes more pistachio cream and pipes it on top. Then he smooths the top with an offset spatula and puts them in the oven. After they've baked, he dusts them off with some powdered sugar. And I love that because it's kind of like the sign off of like, you're done, have some powdered sugar. You're beautiful now. Put some powdered sugar on me so I can be pretty like his croissants. <laughs> The croissant is really flaky, it's crisp, but then the pistachio cream inside makes it kind of gooey and sweet and sticky. It is so jam-packed with all this incredible pistachio that I had to rip the top off to really see what was inside. Oh my god, that's all I'm gonna say. Green food is the best food, you heard it here first. You wanna try a bite? By now you've probably realized that there's nothing in this case you shouldn't eat but please allow me to wax eloquently on this Stilton and apricot scone. It's perfect. He starts by mixing one whole egg with cooked apricots. These are really, really tart. Why? To balance with that wonderful Stilton blue cheese. He adds heavy cream to that. Once he's finished with the wet ingredients, he works on his dry. He's got flour, almond flour, sugar, salt, and baking powder. Almond flour plays a real important role. Not only does it add flavor, which it does, but it adds moisture. He whisks the dry ingredients together, and then he adds cold cubed butter. He makes a little well, pours in the wet ingredients, and then he adds the Stilton cheese and gently mixes it all together. Once mixed, Neil puts this on a sheet pan and he freezes it. Once the slab is frozen, Neil puts it on a floured board and he measures and scores the slab and then he cuts the individual scones. He takes each scone and he brushes it with heavy cream and then he sprinkles it with sanding sugar before they go off to bake. 16 minutes later, they are yours for the grabbing, but you have to pay for them first. Don't make the same mistake I did. The Stilton cheese in the scone adds this great moisture. You've got this buttery flavor and this off-sweet, slightly tart apricot in there. It takes you on a roller coaster. Now, this is like the wildest scone ride you've ever been on. And I'd like to ride this again and again. My mouth is watering right now. What else do you need to know to want to try this? There's something about the size of crumble and flake that's telling about the quality of the product. When you're doing something in such a small space, it has to be precise and it has to be perfect. If I don't love it, we don't make it. That's what it comes down to. But the thing that adds to that is that Neil is such a sweetheart and so clearly loves what he does. You want Neil to be your friend. There are good bakers, there are exceptional bakers, and then there's Neil, basically at the top of that food chain. He would devour other bakers like I want to devour his croissants.